Hello everyone, after HTML, I am back with another session on CSS. CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheet. Now what does CSS do? CSS applies design to your HTML element. Using different types of CSS properties, you can give different type of design to your element. Suppose you want to increase the font size, you want to give color to the text, you want to give background color, all this can be done with the help of CSS properties. If we compare it with a real life example, a building made of bricks and cement would not look good unless and until it is painted good. Similarly, an HTML layout would not look attractive without the application of CSS properties. So to improve the look and feel of our web pages, CSS is very, very important. Now, there are three types of CSS, internal CSS, external CSS and inline CSS. So I'll go ahead with the differences between these three types of CSS, where do we use them and how do we write the syntax of CSS. So let me just open the notepad file. Okay. So as I mentioned in the HTML sessions that for every thing which is written in the HTML document, there has to have a tag. So, for CSS, the tag which is used is style tag, which is used inside the head section of the HTML doc. Now, if we talk about the syntax of CSS, it is element property colon value. So this structure you will follow whenever you are writing CSS in the HTML document. This is the standard syntax for writing CSS. Now if you want to give more than one property then you will use semicolon and define your next property and its value. So it keeps on going separated with semicolon. So let me just give a very small example. So if you want to give color to the P tag what I'll do is I'll mention the property as color then use colon and then give the value of the color. So here we are giving color red to the p tag. Now this p tag is being used in the body tag. And then we close the body tag and then the HTML tag. So when we save it now, css.html, all files, desktop, when we open it in the browser, can you see this text which is which was used under p tag has been assigned color red. So that's how the CSS works. We can have number of elements having different CSS, one single tag having multiple properties. So based on our requirement, we will use the CSS properties. Now this type of CSS where the CSS is defined in the style tag of the head section and the tags are defined in the body section is known as internal CSS because the CSS and the HTML tags are present in the same document. Now if I talk about inline CSS, it kind of follows the same syntax but it is defined in line with the tag using the attribute style and in the inverted commas we give a property colon value in the same way as we did in the internal CSS. Now when we save it and refresh, there is no difference because inline CSS is also doing the same job as internal CSS. Now if I talk about external CSS, in external CSS, the CSS file is made separately and the HTML file is separate. Now whenever we want to refer to the CSS, what we will do is we will give the link 
of that particular CSS file in our HTML document. So now since the HTML file is different and the CSS file is different, it is known as external CSS. Now you would like to ask me that why do we need three types of CSS when they all are doing the same job. So I'll tell you the reason why we have three types. If you talk about external CSS, we use it when the number of web pages are many. Supposedly there are like 20 to 25 pages or maybe 50, 60, wherein we want to use same kind of CSS, it would be foolish to write the same CSS again and again for different web pages. So what we do, we write the CSS once and then just use it wherever we want by using the link tag in the head section of our HTML document. If you talk about internal CSS, it is good for those pages in which in a single document we want to apply same CSS to different elements. And inline CSS is basically used when we want to override any particular CSS for a particular tag. Suppose there are five P tags used in the document. We give red color to all those five P tags. But out of those five, I want to give blue color to one of the P tags. So what I do in that particular P tag, I use the inline CSS. So it will override the internal CSS. So the priority goes like this inline, internal and then external. So depending on your requirement, you can use external, internal or inline CSS. Till the time we are learning all the properties of the CSS, we are always going to use the internal CSS. So as I told you, in internal CSS, under the style tag, you define your element and then the property and then its value. Suppose I want to give to any other element as h1 okay so i want to give h1 yellow color obviously this h1 tag has to be present inside the body tag then only it can be applied and then i close the h1 tag open the p tag Close the P tag and then I save it. So you can see that H1 has got yellow color and P has got okay. So just to give a recall. I have explained you that there are three types of CSS and depending on your requirement you can use any of them. Now once we start with our next session we will understand that what are the different properties available for the different elements and according to our requirement how can we use them to beautify our HTML tag. Thank you for today. Bye. Take care.